Welcome to Circuit Secrets. In today's video, I'm going to show you some more advanced methods for writing code with ChatGPT, including working with free RTOS. This is the second video in a series covering programming microcontrollers with the assistance of ChatGPT. To follow along with this tutorial, you will need an ESP32 development board with a USB cable, the Arduino IDE with the libraries installed to support the ESP32. If you do not have the Arduino IDE or libraries required, the video listed here will show you how to get them. You will also need an account on OpenAI for access to ChatGPT. The programming I will show you in this video involves FreeRTOS. If you do not know what FreeRTOS is, you can get caught up by watching this video. If you are unfamiliar with ChatGPT and the basics of getting it to write code for a microcontroller, you can check out this video to get caught up. The first thing you need to do is start thinking in terms of breaking down the programming tasks into smaller pieces. ChatGPT is pretty efficient at generating code for microcontrollers, but I find it is easier to make extensible code that is easier to troubleshoot and debug by breaking the project down into its component parts. The simplest way to divide C and C++ code is to use functions. A program that uses FreeRTOS has specialized coding in a setup function of the Arduino-based sketch where the tasks are defined and initialized. Tasks are structured the same as functions, and they can call other functions. Function calls can increase the stack size of the task, so this may need to be adjusted when large functions are incorporated into the FreeRTOS program. Now that I've shared some background on how I think of a program when using ChatGPT and FreeRTOS, we will get into generating the code. Step 1. Go to ChatGPT and in the text box type, write a FreeRTOS sketch for the Arduino IDE with two empty tasks to run on the ESP32. This should generate the basic code needed to create a FreeRTOS sketch for the ESP32 and Arduino. I had to generate the code several times before I was happy with the outcome. The first few tries the generated code included task delays which can be great for special timing but are not needed for this demonstration. Remember every time ChatGPT generates code it is a little bit different with different nuances so your results may be different than mine. Copy and paste the generated code into an empty Arduino sketch. Now save the sketch. Select the correct board and port from the tools panel in the Arduino IDE. You can test the code by pressing the Verify button on the Arduino IDE. If the skeleton code will not verify, make sure you have the correct library installed and the correct board selected. When I attempted to compile the sketch, I got an error about the FreeRTOS header file not being found. I commented out this line because this is built into the board support library and automatically included when compiling for the ESP32. I had the same problem with the header for semaphores, which again is the same story. I commented it out and the sketch compiled without error. Step 2. Go to the chat GPT and have it generate a function for your free RTOS program to use. It is easiest to use the built-in serial communications capability of the ESP32 for testing as some ESP32 boards do not have a built-in LED. In chat GPT I type Write a function for the Arduino IDE targeting the ESP32 to output text to the serial port. ChatGPT should generate usable function and the text should instruct you on how to include the function in normal code. Copy the function into the sketch. If the function has the serial port initialization code inside it, it is best to remove it and place that line in the setup function inside the sketch. This is because it takes extra time to initialize the serial port, which only needs to be initialized once. Step 3. Add the line that calls the function to one or both of the tasks. Now that you have the framework for a free RTOS program and a function, all you need to do is call the function from inside one or both of the tasks. To call a function, you use the name of the function followed by a pair of parentheses and a semicolon. The function generated by ChatGPT for me requires the function to be passed a variable in the form of a string. This string determines what text is output by the function. This allows the same function to be called from multiple tasks and have different output for each call. This can be a great way to see what task has priority and if a task may be blocking the execution of another task. Now save and verify the code once more to look for errors. 
Step 4. Now you can upload the sketch to the ESP32. With the ESP32 connected to the computer through the USB cable, the correct board and port selected in the Tools panel, press the Upload button on the Arduino IDE. Most ESP32 modules require the Upload button on the board to be held down until the upload begins. Once the upload is complete, open the serial monitor and make sure it is set to the correct baud rate that matches the serial settings and setup. You should get an almost constant stream of text as the task is executed. If there is an error or nothing happens, try increasing the size of the task stack to correct the problem and re-upload the sketch to the ESP32. You can use this method to create more complicated functions to expand the capabilities and complexity of your program, increase the number of tasks, or build non-free RTOS programs entirely from modular functions. In the next video, I'm going to cover the basics of object-oriented programming with ChatGPT and continue this series on ChatGPT and programming microcontrollers. If you enjoyed this content, please like, subscribe, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video in the series. Thanks for watching.